Hello everyone, welcome to TIC. This is Kushal and today we will be going through this question, rotate image. So let's see what the question says. So you are given an N cross N 2D matrix representing an image. So uh, we will be given a 2D square matrix where the number of rows and number of columns will be same. And we are supposed to rotate that matrix or the image by 90 degrees clockwise. What does that mean? Okay, so if we have this matrix 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, if we pick up that matrix and rotate it by 90 degrees clockwise, here is how the resulting matrix is going to look like 7, 4, 1, 8, 5, 2, 9, 6, 3. So what is happening here? The first row 1, 2, 3 is coming over here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is going to come over here 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, which is the last row is going to be the first column 7, 8, 9. So the first thought that comes to my mind is to take a extra matrix, uh, iterate through the first matrix, iterate through the first row, put those elements as the last column in the new matrix, iterate the second row, put the elements over here, iterate the third row, put the elements over here. Uh, okay, but we are actually not allowed to do that. In the question itself, it is said that we need to do this operation in place that means we are not allowed to use any extra space okay so if we wish to do this operation in place without using any extra space we should think in the terms of coordinates x and y so uh, if you consider this element 1 which is at 0 1 position that 1 needs to go at 0 2 position but if 1 is going to go over here where is 3 going to go here but how exactly are we going to do that at first sight that this might look a little bit tricky but if you look at things more carefully if you look at rows and columns in general uh, we might notice that the elements of the columns are going at the row and the elements of row are going at the column suppose if we consider one four three those elements are going over here but just not that those elements are also getting reversed okay so what i mean to tell you is if we consider the first column 147, that column is getting converted into 147 as row, but you know it's also getting reversed at the same time, 741, which is the first row of our desired matrix. So converting each of the rows as columns and columns as rows, does that sound familiar to you? So we are basically taking the transpose of the matrix and um, after taking the transpose, we're going to reverse each of the rows to get the desired matrix. Uh, let's move on to the coding part and see what needs to be done. Okay, so in the beginning we're gonna check some edge cases. If matrix equal equal to null or matrix dot length equal equal to zero, we're just gonna return now. Uh, as as per our discussion, we're gonna do this question in two parts. So first we're gonna transpose and then reverse. So in order to transpose the matrix, we're going to have to iterate through the matrix. We're going to visit the elements and interchange their X and Y coordinate. Okay, so we are going to have two loops, matrix dot length I plus plus. So this loop was for rows, now for columns. So you might not understand the range I just wrote, but we will go through this after I write the code. So if we need to interchange ij to ji, we're going to have to have a temporary variable. So temporary variable will have value matrix of i and j. Now we're going to have this value i and j assigned to matrix of j i. Now matrix of j i will have the value of matrix ij, which we have stored it in this temporary variable. Just for now, consider that I have not restricted the range. So we're going to take each and every element of the matrix and going to interchange their X and Y coordinates. Uh, the diagonal elements are going to remain at their place only because their X and Y coordinates are the same. So when we come at this place, 2 and 4 will be interchanged. Now 3 and 7 will be interchanged. When we come at this place, we will have 2 here and 4 over here. So if we still take 2 into the consideration, 2 and 4 will again get interchanged and both of the elements will have their original position. So we do not want that. So for that, we are taking the only elements into the consideration below the diagonal. That's why uh, the J will go from zero to I. So now we have already completed this part of the problem. We have already transposed our matrix. So now 
the only thing left to do is reverse each and every row of the matrix. You can have different logics for reversing the rows, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have two pointers. One will be at the start, one will be the end. Their position is going to be interchange. They're gonna come closer, interchange, come closer, interchange till it comes to the middle of the row. So for that, we're gonna have two for loops. So this for loop is for traversing through the rows. The other one, uh, the columns. Now for the columns, the range is going to go till matrix dot length divided by two, the middle of the row. J plus plus. Okay, as we need to interchange the position of the first and the last element, we're gonna have to use a temporary variable here. So integer temp will be uh, matrix dot uh, i j. Okay, uh, we're gonna assign i j the value of the last element. So the value will be i will be same the column uh, matrix dot length minus one, which is the last index minus j. Because in the beginning, the value of j will be zero. Uh, at that time, the other element will be the last element. But when j increases, when it becomes one, we also need to decrease the value and have both of the pointers closer to each other. So this will work. Uh, in the end, we're gonna assign this to temp. Let's see if this works. works out perfectly. Let's try to submit the solution now. So our uh, solution is pretty fast and turns out the memory usage is pretty decent as well. So what would be the exact time and space complexity here? As we're iterating through the matrix twice, once for transposing the matrix, another one for reversing the rows, the exact time complexity will be two into n square. So the time complexity is in the form of O of n square. And uh, for the space complexity, as we are not using any extra space here, the space complexity will be O of 1, which is constant. So uh, that concludes the video. Uh, thank you everyone for watching. Do like, share and subscribe.